world student and an expert in many, many things. Um, and next time you see her, she might actually be Dr. Fee. Nguyen. So take it away, Fee. Thank you, Parna. Good morning, everyone. Um, and I would be sharing my slide deck or Julie, will you be able to do that? Okay, let me, as I present, so you could visually see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna throw in a lot of tidbits at you this morning. But I also just wanted to start off by saying that like, you know, as Janice highlighted, mentoring is a key factor in helping employees advance in their careers. And it's not, but it's not like the only path that organizations can pursue. And as of you joined us last month in our pay equity, pay transparency webinar, we discussed how like a lot of the like really headlining pay gap statistics that we usually see um, come from an opportunity gap and that's where employees don't receive the same chances to progress in their careers and like they would remain stagnant in the same role or like job level and that typically impacts a lot of underrepresented minorities like the BIPOC population that Aparna just mentioned and they tend to be left behind and that is where the pay inequity persists and so today I just wanted to take a couple of moments to walk through other things that could lead to career advancement opportunities or, and social opportunities. Um, Fee, as we're getting started, will you actually describe the difference between advancement and social opportunity? Because this is like PhD jargon that we use mm -hmm. and sometimes HR professionals use, but for folks that are on this call that are not in those spaces, what, mm -hmm. what do those terms mean? Yeah, so I will, I had a, a slide, but I will just like briefly kind of verbalize it to you right now. So essentially, advancement opportunities takes place inside of the office. Think of it as like pertaining to the walls inside of the office and leaders and managers are involved. They take career development very seriously. Um, employees are encouraged in like their one-on-one -on -one meetings with their managers to talk about their developmental goals. Like, where do you want to be in your career? How, how at the end of your like life, where, where would you like to be ideally? And let's kind of bridge those gaps and to build little goals along the way so that you can get to where you want to be. Um, they are given lots of opportunities to develop their knowledge, their skills, abilities, and other things that were related to job successes. And they are encouraged to seek higher level jobs, even though it might be tempting for a manager or leader to want to keep that high performing employee on their team or company. Um, but as well as, as that is scary, because like eventually that would mean the employee might take that manager's job. But if you think about a culture where everyone is advancing, that manager themselves would be advancing in their career as well. Um, so they're mentality of abundance not of scarcity is what i want to try to like emphasize today too is that we have lots of opportunities it's not where you just hoard these opportunities for yourself um and i think that's a little hard to break away from sometimes in our society but um, another type of career advancement opportunity is learning through formal trainings like this, a certification, mentoring, as we talked about earlier, coaching is a really big thing. Job shadowing even itself is like really low um, effort and resources, rotating employees through different types of roles so they get like a wide variety of skills that they expand and receiving constructive feedback. And lastly, um, like job advancement opportunities also comes in the, in the form of like career pathways, which I will go into further detail later because it's I think it's a really cool tool for organizations to have. Um, and so while advancement opportunities focus on employees 
like individual skills and development through goal setting and challenges. There are other types of opportunities too, known as social opportunity. And this is where employees can grow their careers outside of the office. This is the networking that is like sometimes company sponsored. It could come in the form of a conference. Um, and the networking opportunities are aligned with the individual's goals. So it's not like, like Janice kind of iterated earlier. It's not a one size fits all. It's contingent on the employee themselves and where they wanna go. Like, do they need to talk to um, other types of developers trying to grow in like a certain type of language or like using this tool or whatever and that may be. And let's see, it's also important to point out for me to, to tell you, to emphasize that employees are afforded time to attend these social networking events. Oftentimes we see employees like in, in companies have these events, but employees are so bogged down by their actual jobs that they can't attend these meetings, especially if you're a mother or you have other caretaking duties for parents. Um, so there's like a bit of thought that goes into making these events and networking opportunities accessible for, for your employees, especially if they have um, these challenges that we're trying to always like reduce the amount of load these employees have to deal with. Um, and I, I hear a lot, let me know if you have any questions, just pop it in the chat. I could, I could have a moment to like answer the questions at the end, but, um, in the next slide, I want to also, this is a common word. You also hear the sort of conversation is promotion. So promotion is really the process of elevating employees to a higher position. Um, and promotions can take place on the same team, different team at the same company, or a different company altogether. And these promotions come from hitting like very certain clear objectives of performance or tenure. But tenure is not always guaranteed because you know you could be working at a company for years without leveling up to a new um, position. And so when an employee gets promoted, they typically gain more duties and responsibilities. And that also comes with a change in compensation. If we're talking about equitable things, we're not just giving them more responsibilities while keeping them like keeping the pay very uh, similar to each other. And people can also use the word promotion and advancement interchangeably in these sort of like spaces. But I just want to let you know, there is a distinction, skills, or development gain from advancement allow the employees to then become experts in their fields. And that is the result of a promotion. And so the cycle of like advancing, earning the promotion and then advancing and earning a promotion. Um, and so next slide is where we will spend some time learning about career development and growth. Um, this is where the process, if it's like a lifelong journey, like I mentioned, it could be essentially a person such as a high school grad choosing a career and sticking with that career for their entire life or until they decide to career to like have a career change. This person will grow in their knowledge, their skills, abilities, and other types of characteristics that are related to their job. But then they move up the career path until they reach like their dream state, their the desired job or skill level or even lifestyle if they want to work like a <laughs> 20 hours a week and they could still be able to afford a livelihood that they want. So both career advancement opportunities and social opportunities can help career development and growth. Um, and I, I think a really interesting point is the on the job development, which I will go further into in the next slide. So 70% um, research has indicated that 70% of learning occurs informally on the job, which is huge, um, followed by 20% from feedback and 10% coming from trainings like this today. But that isn't to say that training and trainings are inefficient. It's just employees spend most of their time working and therefore they're learning constantly on the job. And so to motivate employees to learn and to be resilient, managers should be taking 
stretch assignments, which are uh, tasks that are challenging, but within reach for their employees to, to designate them to employees so they could continually learn in their um, roles, but not too much because that's when it, they're set up for failure. Um, employees should then also have a learning orientation where they're not fixated on high performance, but just learning, go through, going through the motions and not taking failure too harshly. And lastly, employees should also receive feedback from their managers um, to ease uncertainty and stress of, uh, relating to work. So all, ideally, all three factors of one, stretch assignments, two, learning orientation, and three, feedback are needed to nurture on the job development to, for you to hit that high impact of 70% of developing on the job. Um, and there are uh, 10 things that it could spark on the job development. Um, that's a lot. I won't go into all 10 because of timing, but I want to do highlight number four, which is separate goal setting and development conversations. Um, what this is, is that Oftentimes, managers will combine performance and development conversations together on their one-on-ones with their team members because, like, to be honest, I don't even know if, like, one-on-one -on -one meetings happen as regularly as they should be, but ideally, the performance and development conversations are separate so that employees feel safe to try new things, to develop, to make mistakes in order to learn. And by combining performance and development conversations together, the employee might feel that like they need to focus on their performance because usually it is tied to like compensation, to promotion, it's like higher stakes, which brings me to my, um, the other thing that I wanna highlight, which is number 10, rewarding on the job development. Um, managers or leaders, companies need to make sure that the reward systems are reinforcing performance along with on-the-job development. So I, I, I want to give you an example of what that means. Are you promoting leaders who are developing their teams and getting results at the same time? Or are you just asking for like results and not the development of their teams? So just be sure that they're your reward structures are able to like reward both performance and on the job development. Um, next slide. Um, and as I hinted earlier, Career Pathways is a really useful tool for managers and their employees. Career Pathways show employees a very concrete way what their options are for their career growth if they want to stay in the same job family or if they want to expand to another job family to diversify their skills. Um, each job family has its unique key knowledge, skills, and abilities. Uh, um, and then each, along with the like career pathways is that you get to see the leveling and the level of proficiency that employees need to have to demonstrate for each knowledge, skill, and ability. And usually HR or like employers can collect this sort of information through a job leveling process. Um, and in a career pathway, employees get to like see the visibility of like the managerial track and the IC track. And um, they can also see their options. Like if they wanna to talk to their managers, like I said earlier, like where they wanna be in the future, like in, three years they would like to be at this level, how can they advance or learn to develop their skills so they can be promoted? Um, and I also wanna take a moment to like sh explain <laughs> this example. You could see the arrows, you could see that if you become a manager and it isn't quite working out, you could kind of pop back over to an IC and the different options you have. Uh, and then the purple boxes on the right means that there are other job families that you could transfer over with like minimal learning um, because a lot of the knowledge, skills, and abilities overlap with each other. And sometimes like if you want to be a manager or a high level leader in the future and you want to sort of get a taste for what all the different job families are like and how they operate, you might want to just be at a level seven at all of the job families so that you know how this department could work or in the future. Next slide. 
And then finally, I just want to emphasize or just to like end this webinar by like talking to you how, how you would take a temperature check with your employees. Like at this point, you might feel a little unsure where to start or begin um, to help your employees with their career advancement and social opportunities, but you can start by asking them directly, either through a survey, a focus group, um, ask them how they feel about your company's current or do, are they aware of these options? Like are aware of these like documents um, or policies in your HR portal? Um, and I've included some questions here on the slide that could help you take into account how your company is doing as you move forward. Um, and lastly, I wanna end with some final words, which is to say, to draw to attention to a thing that isn't quite talked about, and that is to be cautious about selecting a few high potential employees to give to devote your attention to. It is very easy to fall into the trap of limited time and resources and to dedicate your precious energy to someone that you think would go far in their career. Um, and we caution this because it contributes to the inequities that exist in the current workforce place right now. We know that the biases that naturally we humans have is to like people like us. And if we get more of the same people in power, like positions of power than in the next generation, then it's um, these inequities will persist. So instead, we recommend and challenge you to create a climate of culture, your organization, where every employee has the chance to learn and to grow equitably in their careers and to close that opportunity gap that I mentioned earlier on um, that creates the pay inequities. So I'll stop for questions now. I, went, I flew through that very quickly. But all of this information will be available to you um, on the training modules on Teachable, along with the, the list of 10 things to, cat, to spark on the job to learn, learning. It's a short article that you can get access to as well. Thank you, Fee. Um, <clears throat> you all, I've been doing this work for a really long time, and it wasn't until very recently working with Fee where she said these high performing programs are um, not only do they exacerbate inequity, they're based on a very limited set of ways in which we define talent and high performing talent. And it's just something for, for all of us to noodle on is it, like, are we only promoting and uh, exposing extroverts, people who show up in certain ways, or do we truly have an organizational environment where no matter where your starting point is, you feel like there's opportunities for you to grow? So that's something that I've like really been noodling on myself. We um, want to open it up to questions. And so, you know, we're a cozy group and feel free to come off of mute and ask a question if you have one or pop it into chat. Um, or Fee or Julian or anybody else are, yeah, squad. What are you curious about? Um, Fee, there's a question in the chat that says, what are the tips for getting leadership on board with some of these strategies? What do you recommend? Uh, a lot of the turnover, a lot of um, reasons why employees are not engaged in lead companies is because there are not a lot of advancement opportunities. That, that may be one of the main reasons why people feel stuck, they feel frustrated, not supported by their managers and company, and that is why they leave. And as we know too, like the cost of turnover and that loss of institutional knowledge is so incredibly high it could be some, I think I, I read somewhere that it could be more than the salary of that employee's um, year salary if you lose someone to like, hot, to find someone to, to replace them and to train them. That is so costly that it might just be worthwhile for them to try a few things that I suggested today in an effort to retain those employees. And as we know, there is a weird shift right now in the great resignation that it would be important 
for them to try to, to implement some of these new practices to keep their employees.